to Sailing Adventures with Island Girl. Well, today we are going to be discussing vessel safety check. Okay, this is the um, U.S. Coast Guard's uh, vessel safety checklist that you're supposed to go by. And then if you check out correctly, you get a sticker like this placed on your boat. And that way, it usually either goes on the mast or I think the port side of one of your windows. So in case the Coast Guard's out there and they go to pull you over, they know that you've already completed the safety checklist for, um, for the Coast Guard. And so they know that you should have all the proper equipment on your boat. Well, just in case you don't have all the proper equipment on your boat, this is what you're going to need. Uh, say you're a new boat owner, say you've just swapped out another boat, um, but we're gonna go through it today. And we're gonna start with your display of numbers, okay? This is uh, like your registration numbers on the outside of your vessel, um, unless you're documented. Sometimes you'll just need your name on each side of the, um, each side of the bow or in the back and your hailing port. Uh, if it's documented and then inside you'll need the numbers, your documentation numbers. Um, but if you're registered, like you have a title on your boat and it's not documented, you normally need just your registration numbers. So say if it's your FL numbers from Florida, your VA numbers, Virginia, or whatever state and whatever number they gave you when you registered your vessel. Um, anyhow, those should be nicely displayed on your boat. Um, your registration and documentation, always have that. Maybe not the original copy, but always have a copy of it on your boat. And maybe a copy of, you know, just any pertinent information in case your bo boat is boarded or in case somebody needs to come on your boat to see who owns it. Uh, just make sure that you have information that leads back to you and that it's your boat and who you are and everything and you know like emergency contacts in case you're out and something happens to you and you need help they need to find your information who the boat belongs to everything pfds or personal flotation devices there are so many out there but say if you have a 50 foot vessel versus a 27 foot vessel um, it's got to be a little different how many people you can fit onto your boat. So act accordingly. Uh, most of the time, I only take maybe six people on my vessel. And so therefore, eh, I have about 10 PFDs, uh, various shapes and sizes, because you never know when somebody's going to bring a baby, a child, um, a small adult. Um, but these are the standard ones right here. This is pretty standard. It should have all the information right here, what type of PFD is, um, whether it's like a class one, type two, you know, personal flotation devices. Most people have a type two. That's what the majority have just for um, recreational day trips. If need be, yeah, you could float in this for a long time but this is the standard one. Um, the one that a lot of people use are offshore ones that if you fall overboard, they're the ones that just go like this and behind and they immediately inflate. They have like a CO2 cartridge um, that automatically inflates it. So if you have hit your head or anything like that, you normally bounce up and you're face up, uh, just like some of these are meant to turn you over and face up. Um, this one, some people have this, it's meant to be worn just around your waist. It's purely um, recreational. It's not an offshore one. It's not, uh, it's really not gonna save your life if you get knocked out or anything, but you pull this. And this is a PFD that is just uh, pretty much recreational. No like long-term anything. Um, what I like is uh, if I'm not wearing my offshore one, what I normally do is I'll wear my one for kayaking. This way it has all kinds of, it has like arm room and you know, I usually wear this paddle boarding, kayaking, um, sailboating, sailing. And usually I attach uh, 
my whistle on here because you have to have a some sign of sa some sort of sound device <whistles> and this gets really loud when you're out there in the water and on some of mine I also have a little mirror to catch people's attention just in case something happens um, well the next one is uh, visual distress signals okay that can be your flare gun uh, flares it can be uh, smoke signals. You know, you pop the can, all different kinds of colored smoke comes out. Uh, mostly, you know, mirrors, anything to catch someone's attention, visual distress. And uh, then of course, fire extinguishers. That's my favorite. Um, even though I have a small, like 35 foot boat, um, a vessel is called a yacht after 26 feet. So anything over 26 feet is a yacht. So on my yacht, um, I, as a former firefighter, I prefer a lot of fire extinguishers. Most of them are these little kitty kind, you know, and that's pretty good. Um, I prefer to have about six. Uh, I have one, they have rules for your length of vessel and how many you need on there, but that is for your particular vessel. I won't go through like how many you need, if you have a 50 foot, 100 foot, if it's classified, you know, what. Uh, also, if it's uh, for recreational versus commercial, uh, it's a little different. This is mostly for private recreation, personal uh, sailboats uh, or regular vessels. Uh, but I always put one in the head or under the sink, under the stairs, by the engine compartment. My, my engine compartment, you can actually get down into it. You open up the hatches, get down in there. So I have uh, two staged on each side, uh, just in case, you never know. And then one all the way at the rear because I have like a little mini fridge. So just in case, it's always nice to have double, triple, quadruple redundancy because you never know. Uh, the next thing, ventilation. Okay, for some of the bigger boats, they have um, like blowers before the engine starts. If it's gasoline versus diesel, sometimes fumes will settle down in the engine compartment and in the bilge area. And if you, if you ignite your engine and it sets off a spark, some of those fumes are combustible and they will, they will catch your boat on fire. So it's good to turn on a blower first to blow out your bilge, blow out the engine compartment. There's just a, a process depending on if it's gasoline or diesel engines. Um, so ventilation, which is backfire, flame control, some of those, some boats will have this on them, but they're normally the bigger vessels, you know, not, not small vessels like mine. Uh, sound producing devices. Again, my favorite sound producing devices. Always have this just in case uh, you really need to get somebody's attention. There's also the bell. Ring the bell. And uh, for certain vessels, it goes by the circumference of the bell, what you're supposed to have mounted on your boat. Uh, but those are some of the, uh, those are some of the noise producing devices. Again, navigation lights, major deal. Okay. So you're supposed to have nav lights, which are the green and the red, um, green for starboard, red for port. You're supposed to have, if you have a sailboat, it's always nice to have your spreader lights working or your, um, your anchor light, uh, just in case you're at anchor overnight, no one's gonna run into you because they'll see you're at anchor. But I always have extra ones. Uh, the kind, if, if suddenly you have, um, like say a an electrical issue, you have a flashlight with the red and green that you can just post up on your, uh, on your bow of your boat or on each side of your boat, a red and green, um, you know, flashlight that can serve as the same thing. And same with, uh, 
the white light, the surround lights, all different kinds. Make sure you always have extra lighting. Um, again, pollution placards. These placards, I, I keep my, they're little plaques, okay? And I have mine affixed underneath my stairs so that people, when they're coming down or going up, my companion way, I can so see, you know, everybody knows the rules of dumping overboard, you know, and in different areas, you know, whether you're in international waters, inshore waters, it's a little different depending on where you were. Um, right now it shows you, you know, what's, you know, plastic, glass, um, sewage, what you're not supposed to dump in our oceans. Uh, preferably it's not too good to dump anything. Um, I also have a composting head, so I never have to worry about that or getting pumped out or, uh, yeah, holding tanks or raw water tanks or any of that black water tanks, none of that. I like my, uh, Yep, composting head. It makes things a lot simpler. Um, again, marine sanitation devices. That's what we just discussed. Um, navigation rules. You're supposed to have a little book called Navigation Rules, Rules of the Road. Um, if you're not already a captain, um, I'm, I'm a captain. And when you go through school, you learn Rules of the Road, Navigation, all that. So. Um, I keep my navigation rules out, uh, and then you have to know your state and local requirements as well. Um, let's see, make sure, um, when I'm traveling, I do, a lot of people are like, oh, I just have my GPS. You know, GPS is great. Yes, it is great, but again, if you lose your electronics, not so great. Or if your battery runs down in your iPad. Uh, or something happens, I always have a set of my charts, chart books, maps, all double redundancy again. And, you know, just in case. But it's not required, but it's just good to have. And, uh, you know, I always have my GPS and any of that. So, uh, another thing, you're on your overall vessel condition, make sure you keep a clean boat. Because in case of emergency, you don't want to be moving. Oh, get the dinghy out of here. What's this engine doing in here? Oh my gosh, where are the flares? You know, I always have everything marked and a clear access all through the boat and a clear access for any exit areas. You know, so if you have to make a quick retreat off your boat, you're not hindered uh, by any debris sitting around. Um, again, I, I keep my electrical system very nice too, AC, DC, I have everything marked, um, all the little labels on it. Uh, so in case I have people new on the boat who've never been to my boat, if uh, they need to turn on lights real quick, if they need to turn on the water, if they need to turn on anything, it's all marked. It's really easy. You know, the battery charger, everything, all the outlets, what to use. So please mark uh, your circuit breakers and all. Uh, let's see, a uh, galleon heating system. So I have a, uh, a propane stove right here. So it, it rocks depending on, you know, if you're out in the sea or anything like that. And then my propane tank is fed from outside in here. Some people use white gas. I've seen electric stoves. Um, but I prefer to have all my gas and everything outside. I even have jury cans uh, for extra, uh, extra fuel. But um, again, marine radios, that's definitely a necessary. Uh, what I do is I always have one totally charged and one that I'm using, and then I have the mounted one. So I always have two handhelds and then the one that's mounted because again, double and triple redundancy for just in case anything happens. Um, let's see, mounted fire extinguishers. Again, I have quite a few, but they are mounted underneath the sink, outside, in the engine compartment, all throughout the boat. So, hey, definitely more is a better choice. Um, 
anchor line for line areas. Okay, everybody should have extra anchor lines, uh, whether you have, uh, I also keep extra line just in case, uh, because some marinas that you pull up to, they have no anchor line sitting there, or in case someone needed a tow, or you needed to rescue or help. It's always, uh, it's always prudent just to have a lot of line extra. Uh, plus, you never know when one of your lines is going to break or something's going to happen where you have to kind of uh, MacGyver something. Uh, again, first aid, first aid kit, necessary. I always keep mine right up here in the head. First aid kit right here. They're, they're simple. You can buy them at West Marine uh, or you can just make your own. Uh, what I've done is I've made a lot of my own or I've added to it. Um, I also have a, uh, a quick stitch kit. Uh, I was a paramedic firefighter, so I know how to do stitches. I know how to do quite a few things to save someone's life. But just as long as you have the basics, uh, you know how to do CPR, uh, you know how to, you know, uh, put pressure on a wound. You know how to dress a wound. Just, you know, try to try to keep people calm and, uh, yeah, know how to patch up a wound and in case something happens. Because if it's going to happen, it's going to happen out there. Uh, next thing, uh, let's see, inland visual distress. Okay, that's, that's about it. Um, so we did pretty good. Major things you should have right here, vessel safety checklist, right here you go through and then you sign down at the bottom and then you get the sticker because you passed your safety checklist. Well, things I also like to have, okay? I have all kinds of lights, okay? Just in case. These are all my flashlights that I have. And I have tons of extra batteries. It's always nice to have those because you never know, just throw it all on there. Then this is a good thing to have too, okay? It's like a heat gun, it's a heat sensing unit. So when you press it and turn it on, it'll tell you how hot something is or how cold something is. Okay, I got this aimed at me, my nose, whatever. And it'll tell you immediately how hot something is. Okay, so these are pretty nifty things to have. Um, also, binoculars. Yes, you never know when someone's going to drop a pair in the drink or just drop them, break them, whatever. And everyone likes to be on a boat and see other boats, see what's going on. And uh, in case anything major happens, you can always use the glass in here to get someone's attention. You can always use it as a, a magnifying glass to start a fire if you need to get attention. I, I mean, I'm talking like maroon type stuff. But anyhow, these guys are great to have um, for everybody. Then, Good pair of gloves. Always make sure you have a good pair of gloves. Instant fixes, okay? This is great for instant fixes. And I always use uh, stainless steel uh, hardware as well. So you should have a lot of extras, you know, in case you have to repair something really quick. And then, since we have been going through a worldwide pandemic and some of you guys may be traveling overseas down to the islands up different coasts and this was a good thing to have during the pandemic it is a quarantine flag so if you're checking into different ports this might be a good thing to have anyhow this has been sailing adventures with island girl I hope you learned something and everybody be safe out there and get your vessel safety check done. Uh, the way you can do this is contact any um, Coast Guard Auxiliary, the local branch, anything, and actually your marina. 
uh, they, they usually walk up and down the marinas and offer vessel safety checks on the weekends or invite some of your Coast Guard Auxiliary in your area over to your marina to perform vessel safety checks. This has been Sailing Adventures with Laura. Well, Sailing Adventures with Island Girl too. Happy sailing. Bye.